All right, today I'm going to review Possible Minds, 25 Ways of Looking at AI, edited by John Brockman. This book just came out in sometime in 2019, a few months ago, maybe, maybe a month ago. Uh, I think I ordered it before it was even released, so it's a very recent book. And what this book is, is it's a collection of essays from 25 different people, a lot of people that are involved with AI, some people that are scientists or just notable thinkers or philosophers from kind of adjacent fields, and they all write um, essays on AI, and then this book is a collection of those essays. The editor got some really great people to write essays for this book. Uh, let me go through some of the notable people. You have Stuart Russell, which he, uh, he wrote the best-selling uh, textbook on AI, I believe. George Dyson, Daniel Dennett, Max Tegmark, who was the author of Life 3.0, which I really liked. Steven Pinker, who's written Enlightenment Now, The Blank Slate, The Better Angels of Our Nature. He's written a lot of really great books. David Deutsch, he has a book that I'm going to review called Beyond Infinity, which I have I read a year and a half ago or so, and I really like that. I think that's everyone, but there are some really great people that wrote essays for this book. And the title of this book, Possible Minds, was a really attractive title for me. It makes it sound like the book is going to be about all the different ways that AI intelligences could exist, like what their architectures might be, what the nature of the AI is, will it be conscious, how they think, will they get along with us, will they feel emotions, will they evolve? Will they be social? Just There's so many different things you could talk about on that subject. And I really thought that was what the book was going to be about. That's what the title made the book sound like. Once I started reading this book, it didn't take me long before I realized that's not really what the book was about. And I think the structure of the book has a lot of flaws. So first of all, the book doesn't stick on one topic. All the different authors choose slightly different topics within AI to write about. And so there's no consistency in kind of the subject matter other than they're all talking about AI. But really, I think the structure is very flawed in this book. So it's a pretty, it's a short book. It's 286 pages and there are 25 different essays. If you do the math, that's just under 11 and a half pages per essay. But the editor spends roughly a page just giving an introduction to the author, putting the heading on there things like that. So each author has about 10 pages to write an essay. And 10 pages is just not enough time to write an essay. When you write one of these essays, you need to kind of lay a foundation for what you're going to be talking about. You're going to have to explain any terms that you use because you don't know kind of what the standard of knowledge will be in the book or what will have already been introduced. So you got to introduce a lot of, a lot of terminology and then just a lot of preamble before you get to your main point. And 10 pages is shorter than what most chapters are in books. So it's really, it's not very much at all to get a complicated point across. So the, the structure of the book, I think, really lets the reader down because I know there's some, really, there's some great authors in the book, but even their essays really aren't that great. There's more problems, though. The quality of each essay really varies author to author. Some people really nail it. Uh, I'll shout out to Alison Gopnik, who wrote an, an essay about AIs and comparing them to four-year-olds, which that's when those are like your peak learning years. And just comparing how the, diff, the brain of a four-year-old works compared to the way AIs think today. Just about how we need to overcome some challenges before we can really have some major breakthroughs with AIs. That was a great essay. Uh, other essays really weren't as great. And a lot of essays spent a lot of time talking about the past and really books that were written in the past. Uh, notably, there's a book called The Human Use of Human Beings written by uh, Wiener. I, that's his last name. But he also wrote another book, I think, called Cybernetics. Both of these books are referenced very heavily in this book. They're referenced so heavily that you almost can't read this book without going back and reading these other books. But those other books were written in like the 40s and 50s, I think. 
I mean, that's when this guy was was uh, at his intellectual peak. So this this approach was really strange for me because I don't know who's going to be reading this book who has read all these AI books from the 40s and 50s because everything they thought then is going to be really far off from what actually came to exist. So it's a little bit of a strange situation where the only people who really might be interested in, in those essays are people that lived through that time period or shortly afterwards. So a lot of this book really missed for me because it just felt like it was written for someone completely different than someone from my background. So with all these problems, you know, I don't think I could recommend this book as a collection of essays. I think there's some good essays in this book, uh, but it's only a couple that really shined for me. I think the editor should have taken a different approach to this book. They needed to either lengthen each essay, either by reducing the number of people in the book or making the book longer, or they needed to do something to increase the consistency between the essays. Maybe instead of being an essay, make them an interview, and then the interviewer can kind of ask very similar questions to each person and then direct them towards the topics that the book really wants to cover. I mean, needed to do something, though, to either increase consistency or give people enough time to make their own unique point on the subject. But 10 pages is just, it's not nearly enough to say anything interesting on something as complicated as the future of AI. So don't pick this book up unless you've read every other book on the topic and you're just dying for another AI book to read. I don't think most people are going to get that much out of this book. And at best, all you're going to do is you're going to find out that there's a few people that sound interesting that you might want to read books from or learn more about. Uh, but the actual book itself is not going to contain that much valuable information for you, which is disappointing because there's some really great people that wrote essays in this book. And overall, the, the book was kind of disappointing for me, which is sad, which I was looking forward to it. And it didn't really live up to my expectations. So I hope you guys like this video. I have another review coming out soon on a similar book called Architects of Intelligence, which is actually a collection of interviews. And from what I've read so far, that book's going pretty good. So maybe that book will be a better version of this book. Uh, I'll also have some more book reviews coming out on different topics. So stick around for those. Like, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.